Hey guys, you're watching Kazuma Nanani. My name is AJ. Welcome to TU31. The update is here at last. And I'm going to show you today something that we can now do with item frames that's totally, totally awesome. So change one is items can now be rotated eight ways in an item frame. Before we only had four directions. Now we've got eight. In addition to that, item frames can now be read by a comparator. So depending on how rotated a item in an item frame is, will vary its redstone output. So to show you what I mean by that, before we continue on, if I have a row of blocks with some redstone coming out of it, if I rotate an item in here, as you can see, when, I've, when I place it in, it faces... Uh, by default to up and right, which gives us one block of redstone output. If I rotate it again, it now goes to two. If I rotate it again, it goes to three. And each rotation that you do increases it by one and makes the signal stronger, all the way to eight, which is the maximum, and then back to one again. Okay? Nice and cool. So, how can we use that? Well, I've put three of them together here to make an item frame combination lock that I've hooked up to a door, a redstone lamp, and a piston, just to show that you can do it to anything. So, if I get this combination right, the door will not open. No matter how much I play with these, if the combination isn't right, the door will not open. But if I do uh, down and to the left, I think this is what it is, down and to the right, no, uh, right, and down. Oh, we had it nearly there. Ta-da! And the door opens, the light comes on. And now, you won't be quite as embarrassing if you remember what your code is. <laughs> but yeah, it's as simple as that. And then as soon as you make one change, everything turns off and closes again. So how is this done? Well, behind, as you can see, this very simple redstone. It might look a little bit complicated at first, but it's really, really not. You can ignore this part because this is just our output to our door, our redstone lamp, and our piston. This is all you really need to focus on. And I've got everything you need in your in my inventory right here. So, step one is we're gonna place down our item frames. Now, you can have, if you want, more than three item frames. You could have five, you could have seven, you could have as many as you want, but be warned to make sure that the first input and the output, wherever that is, isn't more blocks away than a redstone signal dying. There are ways around it, but that's just the simplest way to explain it at the moment. Um, but yeah, you could do five, you could do seven pretty easily. Uh, you could probably do nine pretty easily, but for the tutorial, we're going to stick with three. So once you've got those down, you can choose what item you, you want to put in there. Now, some people go with a redstone uh, torch because it's sort of the, the, the redstone part of it stays in the middle and the stick points in a different direction. But I personally prefer an arrow. You can use whatever you want. If you want to go really crazy, you could use something circular, <laughs> like a slime ball. That would be really hard then. It'd even be hard for you to do it. Once you've got that, you can then put one block uh, just after it and below the item frame and place a comparator on top of each one. Now, this is where you want to set your code. So for this one, I'm going to do my code as to the right, maybe, to down and left, and then down and right. That sounds like a pretty good code. So once you've set your code, you're then going to come back up a block and you're going to run some redstone along the top here. And it's where the redstone dies, which is this one right here. See that redstone is dead? You're going to leave that dead redstone, but take away any blocks after it. Okay? Where the redstone is lit for the last block, you're going to place a torch on the outside. And then you're going to place two blocks after your dead piece of redstone dust. And put a repeater. And then wrap some redstone back underneath this torch that you've done. And you're going to do that with the other two or however many that you've got. So we're going to put down a redstone line. Put our redstone on top. See where it dies. Okay, it dies right there. That's the one with no redstone particles coming off. Can you see the particles there? But not on this one. So that's our last one. That one has to stay. The one that has 
redstone dust on it. The last one, we put a redstone torch. Two blocks after it. Repeater. And then wrap redstone back underneath the torch again. And then the third one here. Oops. See that block disappearing me? Okay. And we're going to have redstone. Ah, that one's dead right there. So we can take these ones away. Torch goes on there. Two blocks. Repeater. Redstone. Now, we do have a problem here. This has wrapped over onto this side. That's no problem. We're going to just place a repeater there instead. Okay? That should fix the problem. I can't see there being any other problem. So, now we've got this. If I hooked all three of these up together, which is pretty simple, what we're going to do is we're going to come from the torch on the first one. And all we need to do is, is join all three of these lines up together. So doing that straight line down here is connected all three up. And we can now hook this up to anything that we want, like a piston, for example. And if the, at the moment, if the combination is wrong, which like it is now, the piston is up. But as soon as we get them all right, which was that, the piston then drops back down it's as simple as that it's crazy crazy simple something that you might want to do because at the moment it's a little bit backwards a little bit backwards if when the uh when the code is correct the redstone input is off okay or output sorry is off and when it's wrong it's on you might not want that you might want the light to come on when you get the code right so that's easy enough to do we just Invert the signal like this, and then there you go. So now it's off whenever the code's incorrect. But as soon as the code gets correct, where was it? This one, that one. As soon as the code's correct, the light then comes on. Same with doors, uh, depending on if you want the door to open or close, you can either have the signal normal or inverted. But that is super, super cool, isn't it? Super, super cool, super, super easy to build. Not resource intensive. The hardest thing is three comparators. Which, in a survival world, you're not going to have too much trouble getting your hands on anyway. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We shall see you in the next episode. Bye!